So you want to install an aftermarket amplifier into your vehicle, but you know what? There's a ton of different sizes of wire to choose from. Which one do you need to use? And what type of wire should you pick? I'm gonna make choosing the right wire really simple. Let's do some calculations. First things first, understand that there are different types of wire, and I'm gonna to explain to you guys why you wanna pick this type of wire here over this type towards the end of the video, but let's get straight into the calculations. The first value that we need to know is the RMS power rating of our amplifier. If we look in the manual here, we can see that this is stable down to two ohms, and it provides 800 watts RMS at that two ohm load. If we were using multiple amplifiers, let's say that we had a four channel amplifier also, we would add up the total RMS wattage. So I've written that down, our amp power P is 800 watts. Now this value is the power that actually comes out of the amplifier, and we know that no amplifier is 100% efficient. In other words, it's going to take more power than 800 watts to actually make 800 watts. So we need to have a rough idea how efficient our amplifier is. The two most common types of amplifier are class D and class AB. Class D amplifiers are usually about 80% efficient, so we're gonna use a value of 0.8 here, and class AB B amps are about 50% efficient, so we're gonna use a value of 0.5. I looked it up in the manual, and this amplifier is a class D amp, so we're gonna be using 0.8 for our example. If I do 800 divided by 0.8, I get 1,000. And what that means is that I need 1,000 watts of total power coming into this amplifier, which is going to be going through our wiring in order to produce 800 watts. So from here on out, I'll be using this 1,000 value. And I will call that P for power total. The important value that I'm trying to find is how much current is actually going to be traveling through our wire. And the variable for current is I. So the equation here, according to Ohm's law, is current equals power over voltage. I already have my power, it's a thousand, and my voltage is the system voltage, so in this case, I will use 13.8 volts. A thousand divided by 13.8 gives me a value of 72.5 amps. In other words, our wire needs to be able to handle a current of 72.5 amps. A good double check for your math is you can take a look at the side of the amplifier here and your fuses should total up to a value that is close to your calculated value. So 40 plus 40, that's 80, which is close. The next step of this process is we need to take a look at this chart. Now feel free to pause and I'll also put a link to the timestamp down in the video description. That way if you guys need to come back to this video in the future, you can easily get to this part of the video. But the way we are going to read this chart is we are going to take our current value and we're going to look for it on the side here. 72.5 amps is right here between 65 and 85, so I'm gonna be reading this row. The next thing I do is I look at my length and feet for the total run of wire. What do I I mean by total length of wire? Well, you're gonna to wanna to take the distance from your battery back to the amplifier, and you're also going to wanna to add in the distance from the amplifier to the ground. I find in most vehicles, this usually takes between 16 and 19 feet. So for our example here, if we go across in this row and we come up in this column, we can see that we should use a value of four gauge wire. But we're not done quite yet. We know how to pick which size of wire we need, but there's still a couple more tips that I wanna give you guys for determining what kind of wire you want to get. Really quick, before I give you those tips though, I do wanna say a thank you to monthly channel sponsor, New Concepts. New Concepts is my go-to source for car audio wiring, whether it be power wire or signal wire, speaker wire, they have it all. They also have power distribution pieces, battery terminals, all sorts of different connectors. They have a wide selection that you guys can choose from. I definitely recommend checking them out. To learn more about New Concepts, check out the link down in the video description. Let's get back into it. A couple additional quick tips for picking out your wiring. First of all, I definitely recommend actually getting wiring that is made for car audio. The reason for this is a lot of times the jacket on car audio wire is a lot more flexible and the wire that is actually made for car audio has a ton of strands, which makes it increasingly more flexible. This is really handy, especially when you have a bunch of bigger wires. This is actually zero gauge wire to manipulate and you know hide underneath the carpeting in a vehicle. You want your panel to go back on good 
And when you have flexible wire, it really, really helps with that. The second really important tip is understand that there's two different types of wire that are popular in car audio. The first is this guy here, copper clad aluminum. Also referred to as CCA wire, this wire is much more budget friendly, but there is a downside. It doesn't have nearly as high of a current handling capability, which might mean based on your calculations, you might need to step up to a larger size wire. In fact, that chart that I showed you guys earlier is based on using this type of wire here, which is oxygen free copper, also referred to as OFC. Now what's important to understand between these two wires is let's say that we have a similar length here. If we measure the resistance on these two wires, the copper clad aluminum wire will actually have a higher resistance, which means that we are going to lose more power within the cable than we would with oxygen free copper. So CCA wire can be good for a budget option, but if you want the best performance, you should definitely go with OFC. Now the other thing, I guarantee somebody has already commented based on my point earlier in the video saying that this wire is better you can't judge a wire just based on how it looks. So what do I mean by that? Well, this wire here, it actually has a copper color. So most people would say right away, oh, that's oxygen free copper. But no, this is copper clad aluminum, meaning it's aluminum strands with a jacketing of copper that gives it that copper look. Now this on the other hand, it doesn't look like copper. How could that be OFC wire? How is that oxygen free copper cable? Well, this is tinned OFC. So what that means is every strand of this wire is oxygen free copper, but it is tinned with a material in order to avoid corrosion. This is actually really nice because I don't know if you guys have ever seen some of the older builds that have OFC wire. A lot of times if you look, if they were exposed to the elements and any sort of moisture, they'll have like kind of a green oxidation and they can kind of get like oxidized and not work as effectively as when you have this type of wire, which is tinned OFC. So moral of the story, do your research, make sure that you're actually getting OFC wire and don't buy just based on appearance alone. If you'd like to see a more advanced video where I do a full electrical system design for a system with multiple amplifiers and components, you can check out that video here on screen or you could also check out the other video here where I show how to determine your fuse size. Here on this channel I do product overviews, build log videos, and lesson videos like this one. If you're new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Learn more about new concepts at the link down in the video description. A special thanks to Lonnie, Ali, William, Marco, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. Thank you guys for watching.